Is this Jets OC position, is that a is that a desirable position right now when you factor in everything? So I sort of don't think about it like that because to me, everyone is desirable and everyone could be fired after one year. So like I was, you know, I saw some of the, I, was, I wasn't I was in the Woody Johnson interview, but I saw some of the quotes and I saw obviously what Robert Sala said and people asking, you know, because it's sort of a must win year, what is it? Like, I don't know that that means anything because theoretically they all could have been fired this year. Like we had two one and done coaches uh, this year in the NFL or not one and done. We have one one and done and one coach fired after a contract extension. So to me, it's, you know, it's New York, which is a lot. You don't know who the quarterback is, which makes it challenging. But if you're a veteran OC, my guess is you come in and know who you're targeting. So I think it's desirable enough to answer your question. But what about, I got you. And I think you can make a case equal parts both ways. I, I got you. But what about the notion that, I don't know how hot it's going to be, but obviously right. Salah's got to start making the playoffs next year at some point. I, you know, I know Woody took a pass on that statement, but let's use common yeah. sense. Year three, you got to start winning. Well, how, wh- where is the desirable? Like, why is it desirable when the head coach might be on the hot seat? They're all on the hot seat. Yeah, but not. I know what, you're not wrong. You know what I'm saying? But you so know like, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but to me, like, these are good jobs. It's going to be a three year deal, probably. Most OC and DC jobs are three year deals. So if you're a coach and you come in and you say, well, I'm going to go be an OC for a year. I could be awesome and we could go to the playoffs and we're good. And if you win in New York, it's a very, very cool thing, as you guys know. Yep. Or, Actually, I don't know. I, <laughs> well, My some team's sports, one. Some I got sports. You. I got you. I got you. Maybe not your sports, but yeah, some sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um anyway, so I mean, I, I just think if you're an OC, or let's say you're a pass game coordinator or something, right? Let's say you're uh Kevin Batula from the Eagles, right? And you have a chance to be an OC. You've been biding your time. You've been waiting for the opportunity. You're not going to be like, all right, well, maybe I'm not going to take this job because we could get fired. Reality is, if you're an OC and you're taking over, you're like, well, I'm going to take over. We're definitely not getting fired now. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think I think okay. when you talk about, you know, you see success, just look at Mike Kafka. He has one year. It's not even – they're not even in lead offense, but they have kind of fixed Daniel Jones, and he's already yeah. getting head coaching – you know, request. Not that he's going to be a head coach anytime soon, but it just it does something when you have success uh, in in New York. Who do you think the most likely candidates are for OC? Um, I mean, one I just mentioned, you know, Kevin Petullo. I, I would say, you know, if you look at um, you look at the history of some of these guys, right? You look at let's see, Robert Saul was in uh, was in San Francisco. You know, who's the guy behind? Who's the next guy behind Kyle Shanahan? You know, I think that would be one. Um, you'd say like, all right, well, maybe the Jets, might they be in the mix for Derek Carr? I don't know. Raiders are looking to trade him. That process is beginning. Certainly an option. He's had a lot of success with Greg Olson. Greg Olson is a really good veteran coach who's now on the Ram staff. That one would make some sense. You can kind of go around the league and look at, like, let's say you're Joe Douglas. You've been in Baltimore. You know the people there. You trust him. You know, they have some good coaches on that staff. Maybe you say, you know what? I'm going to go steal um, from someone on the Ravens staff and I'm going to take James Urban, who's their quarterbacks coach. So kind of look it around, look some histories and figure it out from there. Yeah, no, I think that, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, sitting with the giants and they travel out to Minnesota and you know, you talk about a rebuild. There really wasn't a rebuild. They jumped right back into the playoff conversation. You're hearing some of these hype, you know, uh, promos for the giants and on our station, which is kind of, kind of awesome. But you know, the, the the job that Brian Dable did and the job that Wink did and the job that Kafka did, and I was kind of joking about Kafka getting head coaching, you know, inquiries, but, you know, how long can this stay together if the Giants keep having success from a coaching standpoint? Um, I would say not necessarily that long. Now, Wink Martindale did an incredible job, has not gotten a coaching slip yet, which I'm surprised about, but does seem to be sort of undervalued nationally, which is – Annoying for him, I'm sure, mm-hmm. and incredibly great for her. Yeah. Uh, incredibly great for the Giants. It's ridiculous. He should get one. Um, you know, and then and then Kafka obviously gets one. So the answer to your question is probably not that long, but I think that's okay. You know, like Buffalo has this happen to them too. Every year, Leslie Frazier gets slips. Didn't get one. Last year, they lost Dayball. This year, Dorsey has a slip. 
this is what you want. And the other thing is, and this is something my buddy Mike Garofolo always says, I think the good teams want to re-examine themselves on offense at least every two or three years. Hmm. So if you have a good OC, he leaves. It's actually not a bad time to go, hold on. Are we good? Do we know the trends? What are people doing? Let's get some new voices. As long as it's somewhat familiar for the quarterback, I think you're okay. Yeah, and especially if it's if you have a head coach in, in Brian Dable who's offensive-minded and kind of has his, his pulse on it anyways. It's not like it's not in conjunction with the thoughts of Brian Dable, which brings me to another question. You know, we, and this, is, this is not an indictment really on Robert Sala, but it seems like defensive coaches – sometimes have a lot of trouble finding the right offensive coordinator. And I know that you got to, it is a process to who, who becomes head coach, but there's a reason that offensive guys seem to have a lot of more, a lot more success from Sean Payton to, you know, the Sean McVay to, you know, uh, Kyle Shanahan. Like it just feels like the trend is going more offense and the guys that go defense, they tend to struggle a little bit. Yeah. This kind of bothers me and it's not your fault, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. This kind of bothers me because the all the longest tenured coaches are defensive guys. That's Belichick, true. That's Carroll, true. Tomlin. That's true. I mean, they true. are. That's so true. And McDermott, also a defensive guy. And so every year, all we talk about is the hot head coaching candidates. And I got a board over there with my big list of who all the candidates are and where they're going and everything. And it's almost all offensive guys. Yeah. But someone is going to hire a defensive guy this year, and he's going to be there for ten years. And so, I guess to answer your question. Hiring a defensive guy often will bring more stability, dot, 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 assuming they get it right on offense. I guess that's I guess that's what it is. So maybe it's harder to get it right, but if you do, there's more staying power. Maybe that's the lesson here. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, because that's what we've been talking about all day with Robert Sala and who they're going to hire as the offensive coordinator. It almost has to be like a parallel head coach, not necessarily taking his job, but someone who he doesn't have to worry about, right? It's like it, it's he's not micromanaging the offensive right. coordinator, like he likely had to micromanage Mike LaFleur, who was only, what, 34 years old when he got right. the job. And that's a great point. And that's an argument for bringing in a veteran who either will get a head coaching job somewhere or just won't. Yeah. Or will be there for two yep. or three years. And then whatever happens, happens. So, I mean, this is obviously a key hire for Salah, but and this is not a justification of anything. But I do feel like they have a good foundation but you just need the two most important things that an organization could have. Yeah. That's no, what's great I, about it. You're right. No, I agree with that. Uh, I wanted to at least take it back to the Giants. I, the last thing for me, we're talking to Ian Rappaport here. So, you know, it's funny. One of the conversations that we've had on the air is, is this house money for the Giants? And, how, how you know, I don't view it that way. Let's go. You're a Giants fan. You've been sitting on the sidelines for a little more than half a decade at this point. Last time you were in the playoffs, it went sideways quick out in Green Bay. The first quarter, you knew this team wasn't ready to play <laughs> with everybody dropping passes, right? So, and and you know this as well, success in the NFL is is not always linear. It's not like this incremental growth, like a boom, like you, you never know. One injury, one free agent defection. No guarantee the Giants are back in the same place next year. So, do you view it, though, as house money? We don't. How do you perceive this game for the Giants with a loss? How would you summarize this season for the Giants? House money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, to stop. me. You're ready as success. Oh, you're right. Killing there is me. No you're killing me. There's no guarantee. And look, the Vikings are good. Now, the Giants have been tough and physical and in every game. So I my guess is it's going to be a good game and they will at least have a chance. If they lose, I'm fine. They have no business being here. Everything they've done has been all positive. And there is a chance that next year they have to take a little step back as they get the cap in order and kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, there's they'll probably pay some guys. So that makes it a little bit harder. And so there is a chance to take a step back, but this is an amazing year, regardless of what happens. It gives them, it shows all the players, like this is what we can do buy in because this, so if they lose, I'm good. If they win, it's also house money. Either way, an incredibly successful season for the giants. Yeah. But one more outside of New York, um, is Lamar Jackson and this situation is confounding. I think he's, he's maybe desirable, but maybe not. What's the word on Lamar? Because some people are starting to speculate he's sitting out with this PCL injury because he doesn't want to get hurt because he doesn't want to compromise his next contract. Yeah, this is not contract related. So it's a PCL injury and he just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And no, he's trying and everyone's doubting and everyone has questions and he just doesn't feel right. And I've never had a PCL. Maybe. I'm, yeah, I have. I did. I tore my PCL. Was my it awful? season. It, it was awkward. 
It wasn't awful. It wasn't painful. It's not like, oh God, I feel compromised. It's just, it's awkward. And, you know, right. for me, I had, I kind of had to play with it because I was a second round pick that they were trying to replace. Lamar, he's an MVP. Like he doesn't have to. So it's a little bit different. It's just an awkward injury because it's not, it's not career threatening, but it makes you feel very different than you ever had before. Well, that's a great way of saying it. And that's, and he does not feel right. Yeah. And so I think, you know, could he go out there and play? I don't know. It's not my knee, but I just know he doesn't feel right. And until he does, we may not see him, but if they win, we'll try again next week. Yeah. yeah, actually, I did have one more before we get you out the door real quick. So is there a coach this weekend that needs to win to make sure he's back next season? McCarthy's the main focus. What about Miami? That situation was getting a little sideways. Anybody have to win to keep their job? I mean, I don't know that anybody has to win, but I think if, you know, all those, I think McDaniel is safe. You know, if the Chargers have a really horrendous loss, people will be talking about Peyton. If the Cowboys have a horrendous loss, we'll be talking about McCarthy. I don't know if any of that's real, but we're never going to find out unless it happens. That said, I think both teams win, so maybe we won't find out. All right, anyway, man. Good job, Ian. Enjoy the games, dude. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Ian. Take care. All right.